Hello again, this is the Edge Enthusiast. A knifeless man is a lifeless man. And this is going to be a opening and rating out of 10 review of every knife in my collection that, uh, well, every folding knife, every folding knife in my collection. Starting with the three newest that I just got today, the 80-20.5. Demco 80 20.5. I'm going to give this a solid 7.5 out of 10. Maybe 8 in some people's eyes. Shark Lock D2 Steel. Amazing knife. The Civivi Conspirator in Nitro V. Button Lock Flipper. Black Micarta. This is going to have to be. 7 out of 10. Blade could be a little bit uh, shorter, in my opinion. Very good knife. Probably the best Civivi has so far. Definitely competition to the Elementum. Then the QSP Penguin, with a bunch of fingerprints on it. Red uh, carbon fiber, I don't know what you call that, forged or camo carbon fiber. Also in D2. That aggressive sheep's foot, sheep's foot blade, liner lock, buttery smooth. It's on phosphor bronze, but it's just smooth as all hell. Really good reverse flick. This is going to be another seven out of ten. Uh, the these new these three new knives that I just got today are just they're excellent. I haven't proven them yet, but. Just uh, handling them has uh, given me enough to rate them, I guess. Take that however you want it to. Um, this is the Civivi Elementum Marbled Carbon Fiber. This is an 8 out of 10, easily. D2 Steel. On bearings. Just solid. Solid knife. I've never had any issues with this knife whatsoever. Amazing detent and flipper. Just flies out. Good jimping. 8 out of 10. The Ontario Rat Model 1. Ugh. It's a 5 out of 10, guys. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. But when you can get the QSP Penguin for cheaper, it's a 5 out of 10. Only thing going for it are the Ergos. Boss 8, really? Come on. Only thing going for it are the Ergos and the size. It's pretty big. It's actually the biggest knife here, I believe. The liner lock is stiff. It's hard to push over. It doesn't fall shut. You gotta push it. Yeah, you can get better these days. It used to be a good budget blade, but you can get better. The Benchmade Bug Out in oh, Ranger Green, I believe. That titanium brass anodized. Thumb studs, which I love the look of. It's an S30V, great steel. Really light, super light, ultra light, I'd say. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is this short pocket clip. It's pretty short. I don't really like that. Axis lock. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Because it's uh, the knife I've used the most, other than the Civivi Elementum. 8 out of 10. Bunch made bug out. The Ethan Grow 910 in, mar in normal carbon fiber. This says D2, but I really doubt that it's really D2 because love them knives on YouTube. L U V them knives. He's a knife nerd like me, and he did some uh, testing on some of their older knives, and it was 8CR 13MOV. Who would have known that a $25 Chinese knife was 8CR 13MOV? But apparently some of the newer ones are actually D2. I don't care. That doesn't really matter. For 25 bucks, it's a bearing flipper that falls shut. And it's actually one of the smoothest knives here. And the construction is solid. There's no blade play. Uh, the lockup is really good. Real carbon fiber. It's so solid. It's pretty hefty. Pocket clip is great. The only thing that I don't like is there's no uh, jimping on the lock bar. 
It's a little bit weird feeling. Other than that, <laughs> you're gonna be surprised. This is an eight out of 10. Yes, I prefer this to the Rat One, definitely. And I've used it quite a bit. Ethan Grow 910 is what that's called. Boker, Boker Kalashnikov, Desert Warrior. Push button automatic, aluminum handles, copper coated, not really copper, but copper color coated blade. In Oz 8, not the best. But yeah, you can see that's been carried a lot. Pocket clip is the best thing on this. Look at that, there's no screws protruding. Just slides in really easy and all the way, deep carry. So this is gonna be a seven out of 10 just because you have to close it with two hands and that's not the best, but the opening is really nice. Seven out of 10. The Boker Kalashnikov. K-Bar Dozier, one of my least used knives. <laughs> um, I wanted a lockback though, and it is a good lockback, very good. And I believe it's pretty cheap too. It's probably as cheap as the Ethan Grow, and I would get the Ethan Grow over this. This is a, the handles feel kind of cheap. The blade steel is just uh, 8CR or Oz8. It's one of the two. Nothing special. And uh, what I find kind of weird is there's only one thumb stud, but you can remove it and switch it, it looks like. But yeah, that's not the best. And it, there, it is a reversible uh, pocket clip, but not, not a tip down carry, which I don't really care about, but. Yeah, this is going to be a 5 out of 10 yet again. Actually, it's going to be a 4 out of 10. It's just not the best. Uh, it's not the worst either, but it's definitely not the best. Okay, bar Dozier, 4 out of 10. Swiss Army Knife, Victorinox, I don't know what edition this is. I'm sure there's going to be some fanboys that are like, oh, it, it has the scissors and the saw and... It's the hunter, or it's the camper, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's nice. It's got everything I wanted. It's got the pen knife. It's got the normal blade. It's got scissors. It's got the T-handle Phillips, which is the most used used tool on this thing. It's got the saw. Uh, the scissors are really nice. That's You have to have scissors if you get a Victorinox. You just have to. This is going to be a 6 out of 10, just because I don't carry multi-tools that much. And uh, Yeah, I, I consider this a multi-tool. I don't know how you couldn't. Um, yeah, Victorinox, I don't know what, which model that is, I'm sure you can deduce it. The Kershaw Shuffle 2 Tonto, this is a 3 out of 10, this is terrible, this is the worst knife I own by far. This was also one of the first knives that I bought when I was like, oh yeah, I want to start collecting. Um, as you can see, it does not have a pocket clip because I was an idiot and took it off. Because it got bent and I didn't know how to rebend it today, I know I would know how to do that. But uh, it's comfortable for the for the size, but I hate tantos, and that's why it gets three out of ten. The bottle opener and the screwdriver are carrying this entire knife, um, so it's kind of trash. I don't like it very much. Okay, now these down here are knives that I never use. Well, actually, most of these are knives that I never use uh, or that have just sentimental value or collector's value. This was the first high quality knife, like over $100 that I ever received. I believe I got it for Christmas or for my birthday. And this thing is beat up. Uh, it's it's bad. It's really bad. It's got blade play. Uh, the, this is the CRKT home front. I forgot to say that. It's the first CRKT knife with the home... or the field strip technology, and uh, it, it was taken apart so many times and abused that it's just loose and rattly now. And uh, as you can see, it was badly abused, because that is not a stone wash, guys. That is just a disgusting, ruined knife. But I keep it because uh, I, really, I, I do like it. It's very ergonomic. It's pretty solid, but... This is an Oz 8, guys. I believe this is an Oz 8. It's not a good steal for over $100. Definitely not. I'd rather have B2 any day. Uh, you're paying for the field strip technology, obviously. And uh, maybe I'll buy another one at some point to have as a user. But for now, I'm just going to keep this one. 
this is going to be, if it was brand new, 7 out of 10, but in this condition, uh, like 4 out of 10. But let's pretend it's brand new, 7 out of 10. But I never use this anymore, it's purely just a memory knife. It's the Gerber Prybrid, Prybar Hybrid box cutter. It's actually a really cool idea. It's very practical, it's got a bottle opener, you use those as flatheads, nail, pole, and a pry bar. And it's got these replaceable razor blades. Uh, I worked at a warehouse once and I use this every single day. But now that I don't have that job, it's uh, just kind of a utility tool, box opener, uh, beater. And I would carry it more often, but as you can see, there's no pocket clip, which kind of ruins the whole thing. A lot of people have complained about that. I even tried to get a adhesive uh, pocket clip, but it would not stick to this G10. So it's sad. Uh, five out of ten. If I had the pocket clip, it'd be six. But uh, it does what it does, and it does it good. The Solingen Thompson Guide Knife. It's purely collector's piece. So, uh, you know, I'm never going to use this. It's been well used. It's just a cool bit of history. Really old knife. Vintage for sure. Lockback. Stiff lockback. Brass bolsters. Brass pins. No idea what this wood is. I'm just going to say walnut because, you know, walnut. <laughs> no idea what the blade seal is. Definitely high quality. Uh, I've sharpened it. Took a little bit and it holds an edge quite well uh, from the minimal cutting I've done. It's got Thompson Guide Knife engraved into it. It used to be, uh, if this was a brand new knife, it would be much more apparent since it's been well used and probably polished. It's not as apparent. Uh, as a collector's piece, 8 out of 10. If it was in brand new condition. But to me, it's an 8 out of 10. Uh, purely for collecting reasons and because it's vintage and cool. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Essex uh, Eagle pocket watch knife. I don't know. It's kind of like an old-fashioned fruit knife. Um, I don't. It doesn't even have a, a brand name on it. But guess what, guys? This is a 10 out of 10. And you know why? Because this was the first knife that I ever owned. The first real knife that was mine and mine alone. So, uh... Obviously, it's a 10 out of 10. It came with a pocket watch uh, with eagles on it. As you can see, it's uh, there's no edge. It's just flat. Uh, it used to have an edge, but I rubbed it on the concrete or something because it does not have an edge. It's got a little bottle opener. It's just a slip joint. Uh, steel. Pretty hefty. But yeah, it's, I'm always going to keep this because um, it's of no value to anybody else except for me. Uh, 10 out of 10. It's a Harbor Freight, no name, key knife, one out of ten, because it's a knife, purely that. It's got a blade, it can be sharp, one out of ten. <laughs> this is just a goofy knife, like, I don't even know why I keep it, but I do keep it, just because it's, uh, it's unique, key knife. It's uh, <laughs> the worst key knife I've ever seen, though. It costs 99 cents at Harbor Freight, and the blade isn't even hidden fully in the key, so I don't really get the whole looking like a key thing if it has the blade showing. It's also uh, the pin, the pivot pin, it just rattles like no tomorrow. So yeah, 1 out of 10 purely because it's sharp. And that is every knife in my collection that folds, but... You thought that this was my first knife? No, this was my first real knife. This was my first knife. <laughs> A poorly designed pocket knife friction folder made out of Grandpa's old cigar box. I don't even think this is wood. It might be like I don't know, it feels like cardboard or just really bad wood. A little naked baby on there with some coins. I thought this was the coolest thing ever. 
and I found it in a closet a few years ago and remembered. Oh yeah, this is my first woodworking project and my first my first knife. So yeah, of course I'm gonna keep this as well. Um, those are all my folding knives. This is a 10 out of 10, by the way. I don't know, I don't have to say that. It's a 10 out of 10. It's an 11 out of 10. Uh, these are all my folding knives. I have some fixed blades, but not nearly as many. And I'm not nearly as in love with collecting fixed blades. I kind of just use those only. Uh, unless they're really unique. I have a push dagger. That's about the only unique fixed blade that I've ever owned. And I just keep it purely for collecting. Uh, or maybe some self-defense. Self-defense. <sighs> with a knife that I've never trained with. And that has a poor grip. But yeah. Those are all my knives. Uh, right now, if I had to pick a favorite, uh, just purely based on overall, it's going to be the AD 20.5. I'm going to carry this bad boy so much. Just got this today, and I'm really, really hyped about it. So, yeah. Uh, it's been all my knives so far, all my folding knives. I do keep these in a case, uh, and I put all the stickers that come with any knives on that case. I think it looks really neat. And, uh, yeah. So it's been the Edge Thusiast showing all of my knives that I currently own. I've owned probably four or five times this, but I've given away, sold, or traded them uh, over the years. Over these last, I don't know, six or seven years I've been collecting and uh, spreading the word of how amazing it is to collect knives. And yeah, this has been the Edge Thusiast. A knifeless man is a lifeless man, and I will come back with reviews on these three, and then once I'm done with those, I'll go to all the ones I haven't reviewed in full. Have a good day, guys.